Cars that don't have fuel injection systems have carburetors. They're an integral part of the engine that mixes air and fuel in specific proportions, vaporizes them, then sends the mixture to the intake manifold. The manifold transfers the mixture to the engine's cylinders, where combustion occurs. Filtered air enters the carburetor and mixes with fuel. When you press the gas, the carburetor opens conduits for the air and fuel mixture to flow to the engine. Two metering blocks control the proportion of fuel to air. Computer-guided precision tools machine them out of aluminum. Meanwhile, workers install components called boosters in the carburetor's main body. These boosters spray the fuel and air mixture as a mist into tapered conduits called venturi. Those lead to the intake manifold, which transfers the mixture to the engine cylinders. Another computerized machine makes each throttle shaft from a bar of steel. These shafts turn when you press on the gas, pivoting the butterfly discs that open those conduits to the intake manifold. The tooling machine bores screw holes for attaching the butterflies and carves grooves to prevent fuel from leaking out. Workers install the throttle shafts in the carburetor's base plate. One side of this plate will bolt to the main body, the other to the intake manifold. The butterflies are made of aluminum, steel or brass, depending on the carburetor model. He flips the base plate and flares the bottom of the screws to prevent them from vibrating out and falling into the engine. After installing an adjustment screw for tuning the carburetor and using thread locking fluid to ensure the components don't loosen, it's time to assemble the levers that turn the throttle shafts. A washer and a cotter pin hold it all together. A few pulls on the levers ensures that both throttle shafts move freely and smoothly, turning the butterflies perpendicular to open the conduits and flat to close them. Next, the accelerator pump arm. It shoots an initial burst of fuel when you start the car. The carburetor's cast metal fuel bowls go into a vibrating tumbler where metal balls smooth their surface. Then they receive a protective coating. Now a worker installs a float to control the fuel level inside each bowl. This is essential because too little fuel would prevent engine startup and too much fuel would overflow and cause a shutdown. A gasket sandwiched between the main body and the base plate will prevent fuel from leaking out and dirt from seeping in. As a precaution, they coat the base plate screws with thread locking fluid so they won't loosen over time. Now the base plate that contains the throttle shafts and butterflies is connected to the main body that contains the boosters. Next come the metering blocks, a gasket over each one, and then into a fuel bowl. Then one block and bowl unit goes on each side of the main body. Just one final adjustment to the accelerator pump lever and arm, and the carburetor is finished. In the quality control department, every carburetor undergoes testing with fluids similar to gasoline. They check if the accelerator pump squirts out enough fuel at ignition and during the transition from idling mode to acceleration. Then, once everything's running at regular speed, they measure the amount of fluid the boosters spray per hour. Once they've passed quality control, these carburetors will really be able to rev you up. <laughs>